A couple of weeks ago, I received a question that asked why I put the script tag for loading the JavaScript file inside the body tag. I answered that quickly, but that question leads to further discussions on JavaScript loading strategies. So in this tutorial, we are going to do the first installment of JavaScript loading strategies. And that is placing of the script tag. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. There is a lot to discuss when dealing with the strategies you use to load your JavaScript files. In this tutorial, we are going to deal with the placing of the script tag and some of the issues surrounding that. First, let me show you the example I've set up and where I have placed the script tag for that. Now it's a very simple JavaScript file. All I'm doing is grabbing the h1 tag from the HTML file and then just logging it to the console. Here is the HTML file. Pretty simple HTML file. It's basically this one here that displays the text JavaScript loading strategies placing the script tag. And down here at the bottom is where I have placed the script tag that loads the JavaScript file app.js. So if we look at the console, we can see that the h1 tag is displayed based upon that code. The first reason why I put the script tag in the body tag, let me just move this. This will help illustrate that. So if I delete it from there and move it up to the head tag paste that now when I reload the page notice that we get a null so this log statement produces a null so basically what it's meaning is that we were unable to grab the h1 tag why are we unable to grab it well it hasn't loaded yet this script tag loads at the very top none of the tags within the body tag have loaded yet so the h1 tag is not even available so when that JavaScript code executes we can't even grab that now there are ways around that for example I could use an event listener on the document object and just check for an event the event is is DOM content loaded basically that tells me or that event fires when the DOM is loaded so let's look at that really quick. If I do document dot add event listener and then the event as I mentioned is DOM content loaded. Notice where the uppercase letters are for that particular event and then we have to pass in a function that will execute when that event happens. So let's go ahead and put the body of that function. And in the body of the function, I'm going to put these lines here. Now I will keep that script tag inside the head tag. So I haven't changed that. But let me save this and we'll refresh. And now you can see it's working. And the reason it's working now is because this event, for the first thing we do when the script loads is we add an event listener to the document object and then this event does not fire until after all the DOM is loaded and so then it's able to find the h1 tag and that works for it so that is one reason that I place the script tag at the bottom of the body tag I know that DOM elements will load by then but perhaps there's a better reason so let's discuss that and for the second reason let's first talk about how an HTML page is loaded all of the tags and assets this asset here being an image all of those tags and assets that are encountered in the HTML page the browser has to download and then display now the browser can download several components at once but what happens when it encounters a script tag? At that point, 
no additional downloading happens until the script tag is completely downloaded and then executed. So it must do both of those things. And so the script tag at this point in the document is going to block the loading of all these other things. So if I place it down here, by the time it encounters the script tag, it's already loaded all of this. And so then it doesn't block it. Now, why are we concerned about blocking that? Well, if we block it, it takes just a little second longer. We're talking about milliseconds here, but it takes a little second longer for the page to appear for the user and for the user to be able to begin interacting with it. And so it has to do with loading strategies that affect how fast a page loads. So by placing the script tag at the end of the body tag, the other elements have downloaded before that JavaScript file interrupts things. Now we learn a couple of things from this little discussion about page loading. First, one thing we've learned, the larger the JavaScript file is, the longer it will take to download. Since the browser must download that file, large JavaScript files will take longer to download. So the more that is in them, the larger they are, the longer it takes. Second, another thing, when it encounters that script tag, it must do an HTTP request to begin downloading that JavaScript file. And then it downloads it, and then it executes it. So based on that information, each time a new JavaScript file is encountered, the browser must do another HTTP request for that new JavaScript file and download that and then execute it. Both of those things can affect loading time. So a large JavaScript file can affect loading time and the number of JavaScript files can affect loading time because HTTP requests do take time. So if we have to do that multiple times, that adds to the amount of time it takes for that page to load. So just in closing, as we finish up this tutorial, I want to present just a couple of ideas that can be used to improve loading. So let's look at those. First off, place the script tag at the end of the body tag to prevent blocking. So it doesn't block the other assets and tags from loading. So that appears as soon as possible for the user. Second thing, combine your JavaScript files together. Now, as I mentioned, multiple JavaScript files will require multiple HTTP requests. So by combining them together, that narrows it down to one single HTTP request. Now, that causes a discussion because I love to separate things out into separate JavaScript files. In fact, I recommend that because it makes the development process much easier. So how do you balance that with combining them together? Well, the way you do that really has to do with third bullet item as well, and that's minifying JavaScript files. Now, if you don't know what minification means, basically what it does is when you minify a file, it goes in and removes all the comments, all of the spaces that are unnecessary um, so that the JavaScript file becomes as small as possible. So. So by removing those things, it makes for a smaller JavaScript file, which downloads faster. But also, usually the utilities you use to minify JavaScript files have a way of combining them together. And that's what I do. When I want to combine JavaScript files together to help faster loading, I do that with utility. I don't manually do that. And so in my development, I'm still working with multiple JavaScript files. But when they're minified, they're combined together into a single JavaScript file that I can then place into the HTML file. So those are some additional tips for loading strategies. I hope this discussion on loading strategies was helpful. Now, there are other techniques and design patterns that deal with loading that we will discuss in another tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful, hit the like button. Also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link, the one with my face in it, on the left. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for full courses and to support this channel. Thanks for watching.